All right, so uh, this is showing, uh, you can see uh, a back view, and here we can see C pair C1, C2, C3, all the way to C8, and there's always a right and left. And then there is T1, T2, T3, again right and left, all the way down to T12. Here's a, a L1, right and left lumbar, first lumbar, uh, right and left second lumbar, down to L5. And then we have our sacral spinal nerves, S1 to S5, and then a coccygeal. Uh, let's look at the bottom picture. And in the bottom picture, we can see how the spinal cord passes through the vertebral column. Here's the spinal cord going through the vertebral column. Here's those pairs of spinal nerves coming off at intervals. How do those spinal nerves get out of the vertebral column? There are openings or holes between the vertebrae. They are called intervertebral foramen. Holes between the vertebrae through which the spinal nerves can exit. We'll also uh, draw your attention to the fact that there are three membranes or meninges wrapped around the spinal cord and also wrapped around the brain. They're wrapped around both the spinal cord and brain, the central nervous system, to protect it. You've heard the term meninges because you've heard the term meningitis. And uh, so uh, identifying these three meninges, the innermost one is called the pia matter, which literally means soft mother. Uh, and that adheres right to the surface of the spinal cord and brain. There is a middle membrane or meninges called the arachnoid membrane, which means like a spider web. Arachno means spider. And then there's the outermost meninges or membrane called the dura mater. Literally, it means the tough mother. Dura, like durable or tough. Mater is mother, the tough mother. And uh, that, uh, these are all surround and protect. Now, a couple of other things. There's an important space between the middle arachnoid membrane and the innermost pia mater. And that space, right underneath the arachnoid membrane, between the arachnoid and the pia matter is called the subarachnoid space. And that subarachnoid space is filled with CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. So there's fluid circulating in this area right here. Another area I want to draw your attention to is the area, the space, just outside the dura matter. Just outside the dura matter is called the epidural space. How you've heard that term, of course, is you've heard of women having an epidural during childbirth. And what they do, as we'll learn, is they release a local anesthetic just outside the dura matter membrane. That's where the local anesthetic is released or in, uh, injected. And uh, that's going to cause a numbing or a loss of sensation of uh, all these spinal nerves and so on. Area. We'll talk more about that. That's called an epidural, because that's called the epidural space. <clears throat> um, on, page, on page 28, so on page 28, and you'd say, what page? Page 28. So this shows the innervation of the body. Which spinal nerves innervate which parts of the body? Now, what does the word innervate mean? Well, it's got right and built into it the root nerve. Innervate means to provide a nerve supply. And we can see here on this map which spinal nerves supply or innervate which parts of the body. The general pattern is the following. Uh, first of all, uh, the cervical spinal nerves coming off at the neck level basically supply or innervate the neck and the arms. They innervate the neck and the arms, the cervical spinal nerves. The thoracic spinal nerves primarily innervate the torso, the body. And the lumbar and sacral spinal nerves innervate the legs. That's the general pattern. Okay, right in order, right in order. Uh, I'm not asking you to memorize any specific area as far as which spinal nerve innervates it. As an example of what we're talking about, 
Right here around the neck, it's labeled C3. What does that mean? The third cervical spinal nerves, and there's a right and a left one, innervate around the neck. <clears throat> now, if somebody suffered some injury where they can't move their neck, then maybe there was an injury uh, to uh, the third cervical spinal nerve. Now, you have a right one that innervates the right half of your neck and a left one that innervates the left half. Another example, you'll notice that the spinal nerve that innervates this lower part of your forearm and your thumb, and also the index finger, is C6. I'm not asking you to memorize that. But that would mean, what if somebody can't move their thumb? They were in an accident, they can't move their thumb, so then they're going to want to do some scans and investigate whether there was nerve damage to C6 on their right, the right C6. Obviously, there's a left C6 going to their left hand. So uh, that's how uh, these spinal nerves innervate or supply the body. Now, what is a nerve? So we've got these nerves going to the different parts of our body. What is a nerve? So I wrote, each nerve is like a cable. I like to think of a nerve like a telephone cable. They're pretty big. You can see that this is pretty much the scale. This is the size of these spinal nerves. Clearly, they're large. You can see them. So each one's like a telephone cable. Now, in a telephone cable, aren't there a lot of wires inside of a telephone cable? Well, inside a nerve, a, a nerve, spinal nerve, a cranial nerve, are hundreds of thousands, millions of microscopic wires. And these microscopic wires are called nerve fibers or nerve cells. They're called nerve fibers or nerve cells. So we wrote, inside a nerve are all these thousands, really millions, of nerve fibers or cells. Now, there are two types of wires or nerve fibers, nerve cells. Sensory or afferent, which send information from the organs of our body to the central nervous system. And there are motor or efferent nerve fibers that transmit orders from the central nervous system to the organs of the body. Are these new terms afferent and efferent? No. Let me show you where we had learned this before. This goes back to page C6. If you turn back to page C6, didn't we learn that another word for sensory is afferent, and that provides the input signal or information in? And uh, another word for motor is efferent, and that provides the output signal out. Same concept, same idea. And in fact, here, here was a picture that showed this, right? So the sensory or afferent uh, input and the motor or efferent output. So we're using the same jargon, haven't changed anything. <clears throat> All right, well, since we're looking at, uh, we're on this page and it's colorful, may as well look at this picture. All right, so what is this picture showing? This is showing a typical spinal nerve. Question? This is showing a typical spinal nerve. I wrote, here's a, this is a spinal nerve. It's coming off the spinal cord, the central nervous system. So all we're doing is we're looking at one of these nerves coming right off the spinal cord, and we're saying, what's inside it? What's inside it? And there are really hundreds of thousands of mi or millions of microscopically thin nerve fibers, nerve cells, little wires. Now, you can see the nerve with your own eyes. You cannot see a ner an individual nerve cell or nerve fiber with your own eyes. It requires at least a magnifying lens. They're thinner than a nylon thread. So they're really thin. Now, I drew four lines, four different colors, to represent the four types of wires that are inside of each spinal nerve you would have thousands of each of the four types. What are these four types? So, I, uh, on the blue and green, and you don't have to use blue or green, they're not really blue and green in color. The blue and green uh, lines that I drew, notice I show arrowheads pointing how? I show them pointing towards the spinal cord or the central nervous system. 
These are wires. These are nerve fibers, nerve fibers that send information to the central nervous system. This is the input signal. These are sensory nerve fibers. Now, why did I draw blue and green? What's the difference? I labeled the blue ones, and it doesn't have to be blue. I labeled them somatic sensory neurons. I labeled the green one, and it doesn't have to be green, visceral sensory neurons. And I'm going to be telling you the difference uh, between somatic sensory neurons and visceral sensory neurons. But what we can agree on, uh, in general, is that both of them provide sensory information, input signal to the central nervous system, to the spinal cord. Now, uh, I also drew two lines, an orange one and a red. And you'll notice that in both cases, their arrowheads are pointing away from the central nervous system. These are sending signals in the form of nerve impulses, action potentials, rather than towards the central nervous system, away from the central nervous system. They are sending commands, orders. These are sending commands, I wrote the word command, commands, to the effectors of the body. They are commanding your skeletal muscles, your heart, your internal organs, the various organs of your body to do something. So these are motor neurons. This is the motor neuron or efferent neurons to the effectors. Now, why did I use orange and red? What's the difference? I labeled the red ones, not that it matters, it doesn't have to be red, somatic motor neurons. I labeled the orange autonomic motor neurons. The, in both cases, these are motor neurons activating something. Well, let's try to clarify these. This is really that the last, quote, essay topic that I gave you. Remember, we gave you 11 of them. And the 11th was to just make a distinction between sensory neurons, inner neurons, and motor neurons, if anybody looks at that. So uh, let's, let's address that right now by looking at, let's see, we're going to jump ahead just to do this. Uh, let's jump ahead to page 35. And on page 35, below the pictures, and you'd say, what page are we? We're page 35. And we really want to include, for the first exam, the information through page 36. So I kind of jumped ahead, but we'll introduce you. This is page 35. Again, a lot of this stuff I'm sure you might you learned in anatomy and you remember it from that. There are three types of neurons, three general types of neurons functionally. You'd say, yeah, what are they? Number one, there are sensory or afferent neurons. Number two, there are inner neurons. And number three, there are motor neurons, or efferent neurons. Those are the three types. Sensory or afferent neurons, inner neurons, and motor neurons. Now let's just start with inner neurons, because I hadn't even mentioned them. On that other picture, we saw I identified some of those wires as sensory neurons and others motor neurons. What are inner neurons? Inner neurons are located entirely inside your central nervous system, entirely inside your brain or spinal cord. <clears throat> what are they for? The purpose of inner neurons, also known as association neurons, is these are the guys used for thinking, memory, and decision making. Those are the neurons we use for thinking, memory, and decision making, among other things. Let me give you an example. We have talked about how you have a temperature control center in your brain. So what type of neurons make up that temperature control center? Sensory neurons, motor neurons, or inner neurons? Inner neurons. 
They're entirely inside your brain. And these are used for decision making. Isn't that what your temperature control center does? Doesn't it make decisions? Doesn't it compare sensory input with desired set point? And it makes a decision that if they don't match, it sends a signal down the motor neurons to the effectors. So the neurons that are inside your control center are inner neurons. They're used for thinking and memory and decision making, among other things. Now, uh, the sensory neurons, or afferent neurons, they send APs, action potentials, nerve impulses, for, uh, to the central nervous system. They are sending information to the central nervous system. <clears throat> there are two types of sensory neurons. There are somatic sensory neurons, and there are visceral sensory neurons. The somatic sensory neurons transmit information from your skin or skeletal muscles to the central nervous system. And these neurons, the information they send, usually reaches consciousness. Now what does consciousness mean? Consciousness means awareness. Now, in contrast, there's a second type of sensory neuron called visceral sensory neurons. In anatomy, you learn that the word visceral means internal organ. Visceral means internal organ. Visceral sensory neurons transmit information from your visceral or internal organs to the central nervous system. In general, this information doesn't reach consciousness. You're not aware of it. All right, so you'd say, I don't, you know, you might be thinking, I don't know what he's talking about. So let's consider the following. <clears throat> if we put an ice cube on your skin, will you feel it, that it's cold? Yes. All right. Uh, so you can feel, you're aware of sensations from your skin. Is that okay? Wiggle your toes. Are you wiggling? Did you feel the move? So you are aware of when you wiggle or move your toes. Can you tense the muscles in your leg? Can you feel your muscles contracting, tensing up? No? Okay, get to the hospital quick. <laughs> All right, so can you feel sensations from your muscles and when they move and contract? All right, now, can you, all right, is that okay? Now, can you feel your kidneys filtering the blood? Get to the hospital quickly. <laughs> all right, I don't feel my kidneys filtering my blood. You really, you can feel it? How's it feel? Great. It feels great. All right. Can you feel your pancreas secreting pancreatic juice? Can you feel your liver secreting bile? Can, can you feel when your stomach secretes more gastric juice? <laughs> you, okay, you're not supposed to. All right. It's uh, can, can you feel when your gallbladder contracts to release more bile? All right. Well, you, you, you can't really feel your internal organs, can you? Now, there are sensory neurons informing your brain that these organs are working. But it doesn't reach consciousness. Now, there are some exceptions. There are some visceral sensory neurons where the information you will feel, you will be aware of. The most notable is pain. So we know that if there's injury to those internal organs, let's say that stomach, okay, then you will feel pain. But that's one of the exceptions. If everything's working okay, you don't really feel much going on inside your internal organs. Hunger, Hunger is not something that you feel from your tummy. It's something you is created as a drive in your brain. This is in your brain, not from your stomach. Well, I know you say, I feel hungry, and you're thinking your stomach, but it's really in your mind. Well, like, it makes a noise. Huh? It makes a noise. All the time? No, like, Always? Well, yeah, it's on your mind. <laughs> All right. But most people's stomachs don't necessarily make any noise, even if they're hungry. <laughs> Get to the hospital. <laughs> All right, they, 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 we don't, it's, this is, uh, the hunger is a drive. Uh, here's another example. If, if you, uh, 
If, uh, if, if you're thirsty, is that coming from your kidneys? <laughs> Thirst? It's in your mind. All right? So the, we'll get to that. But in general, with the exception mostly of pain, we don't feel much sensation from inside of our, inter, our internal organs. Now, we said that there are, at the bottom, motor neurons. Motor neurons are, this page, if you just walked in, page 35. And uh, motor neurons are also called efferent neurons. And they send action potentials, nerve impulses, from the central nervous system to the effectors of the body. They are sending commands. Now remember, we use this word effectors. It's used in physiology, it's used in medicine to refer to the organs of our body that do stuff. They're called effectors. They're collectively called that. Uh, now, there, on the next page, there are two types, on page 36, there are two types of motor neurons. Two types of motor neurons. There are somatic motor neurons and autonomic motor neurons. Somatic motor neurons innervate, they control skeletal muscles. And they are under voluntary control. Autonomic motor neurons control our internal organs. Technically, what they're really controlling is visceral smooth muscle of internal organs, or cardiac muscle, which is in the heart, heart muscle, or glands, salivary glands, sweat glands, right, mucus secreting glands. So these are the internal organs. And they are not under voluntary control. So you'd say, I don't know, I don't get it. What do you mean? All right, so let's test this. Somatic motor neurons control skeletal muscle and they're under voluntary control. Okay, wiggle your fingers, right? You're going to use your finger muscles. Go ahead, wiggle them. Go. Stop. Wiggle them some more. Go ahead. Stop. Okay, it looks like you got pretty good control. Okay, you don't have to go to the hospital for that. All right. Now, uh, let's try this. I want you to speed up your heart rate. Go. Speed it up. Slow it down. Stop it. How'd it go? All right, let's try something else. Uh, go ahead, secrete bile from your liver. Secrete some bile. Go ahead, go. Okay, that's not working. Okay, salivate. Go ahead, start salivating. Stop salivating. Stop it. Okay, we're not doing too well in this. In other words, we don't seem to have voluntary control over our internal organs. Did you have a question or a comment or something? Or somebody? So what's the way if you start running, you can speed up your heart. Now, I'm not talking about, you, you, do you have, you, can you just do it? Just make it happen. When, when you wiggled your fingers, you didn't have to say, well, if I start running, I can move my fingers. Well, like breathing, you can stop breathing. I mean, you can stop breathing. what? Breathing. Breathing? Yeah. Uh, uh, breathing is a skeletal muscle. <laughs> Go ahead. Breathe. Breathe. Go ahead. Breathe fast. Uh, stop. Breathe. So that's the skeletal muscle. It's not an internal organ. It's called the diaphragm muscle. That's a skeletal muscle. It's the most important of all skeletal muscles. We have voluntary control over it. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. You'd say, but I normally don't consciously try to make it happen. We're going to be learning that for skeletal muscles, you have the option of voluntarily making the move, or your brain can do it subconsciously. <coughs> That's what shivering is. That's using your skeletal muscles, but they're being activated in involuntarily, subconsciously. But we said you could stop the shivering by voluntarily moving those muscles. So that's true with your diaphragm muscle for breathing. You do have voluntary control. You can voluntarily, I'm going to breathe, okay, I'll stop breathing. I'm going to breathe, I'll stop breathing. Now, if you say, well, I'm just going to, I'm not going to breathe, then your brain's going to make you breathe. All right? But you can't do that with your heart. You can't just stop your heart or speed it up or make it work. You'd say, well, yeah, if I start running, yeah, but that means you've got to do something. I'm just saying, just command it. Make it happen. Just start salivating. Stop 
salivate. You can't do that. Okay, okay. Because there's no muscles in your ear. You're pointing to the earlobe. There's no muscle in your earlobe. What do you want it to do? Yeah, it, Dumbo could use his ears to fly, the, the flying elephant. Okay. There's some muscles on the side of the head that can cause some people are able to move their, their ears a little bit because of using those uh, muscles on the side of their head. Not everybody. Uh -huh. What muscles are for like your eyes to move or like some Those are involuntary uh, contractions of the skeletal muscle. We all have had charley horses and spasms, and we can get uh, spasms of intestinal muscles. Those are abnormal contractions. Yep? How about like when the eyelid? Well, that's what she just oh, asked. And, and I just said uh, that those are ab that's abnormal. It happens. We've all had a little twitch, and then it goes away. But that's not what the way it normally works. All right? So uh, we don't have voluntary control over our internal organs, right? These are not under voluntary control. That's why the motor neurons that control them are called autonomic, like the word automatic, autonomous, on their own. So let's, <clears throat> let's summarize all this by this picture. On this picture, and have we seen this picture before? Page C6. It was the same picture it was on the lower part of C6. This shows us all the different types of neurons. Let's actually start right here at the top. So what do we call the neurons that are located inside of our brain that are used for thinking, memory, and decision making? They're called inner neurons. Now, we've got neurons that are located, they originate outside of our brain, outside of our central nervous system, that send information into the central nervous system. They're called sensory neurons or afferent neurons. But there are two types. There's the sensory neurons that send information from our skin and skeletal muscles. And there are the sensory neurons that send information from our internal organs. What do we call the sensory neurons that send information from our skin and skeletal muscle? They're called somatic sensory neurons. What do we call the sensory neurons that send information from our stomach and our kidneys and our liver? They're called visceral sensory neurons. Is there a difference? Yes. We usually are conscious or aware of information from our skin and skeletal muscle. In general, we're usually not aware of this information. It is, our brain is getting information from all of our internal organs, but it doesn't reach the level of our brain where we're aware of it. Now, uh, the motor neurons. There are two types of motor neurons. The motor neurons command the organs of our body. They activate these effectors. Uh, there are motor neurons that control our skeletal muscles. They're called somatic motor neurons. They're under voluntary control. At least they can be. And then there's the motor neurons that control our internal organs, like our heart, our stomach, our salivary glands, our sweat glands. They're not under voluntary control. They're called autonomic motor neurons. Now, why is our nervous system set up like this? Here's why. You'll notice that we don't feel what's going on in our internal organs. And we do not have voluntary control over our internal organs. Our brain is monitoring these internal organs. And our brain is controlling these internal organs. But not at a conscious, aware level. And that's good. Because I don't want to worry about it. Our brain is controlling all of it at a level in the lower parts of our brain so that I don't have to mess up my brain thinking about it. Think about what it would feel like if you felt all the sensations of your internal organs. Right? Woo, my kidneys are feeling, oh, my gallbladder just, oh, my pancreas secreting, oh, my liver, oh, it's my, you'd be like, oh, you'd be so overwhelmed with sensations from all the internal organs. And what if you had to worry about controlling your heart rate? What if you had to, you start to run, and you'd say, you know what, let me speed up my heart rate, I'm running. Right? You don't have to think about it. It's going to happen automatically for you. 
And uh, you, when you eat some food, you don't have to say, let me, you know, I better salivate some more. You know, I'm going to eat some food. Let me secrete a little bit more juice in my uh, digestive tract. It's all going to happen automatically. Your brain is controlling all these internal organs, but you don't have to worry about it. So why is that good that you don't have to feel sensations from your internal organs or worry about your internal organs? So that you can focus on the external world around you. You are aware of sensations on your skin and the movement of your body. And you have voluntary control over your skeletal muscles so you can drive a car, you can text message, right? You can clean teeth as a dental hygienist, you can perform surgery, you can build a house, you can do all these things because you're not distracted by what's going on internally. That's how our nervous system's organized. We don't feel and we don't control consciously our internal organs so we can focus on the world around us. You're listening to me, presumably. You're, you're writing notes down. You're focusing on what's going on outside of your body, not within your body. Your brain is still controlling it all, but you don't have to worry about it consciously. Question comes. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't become conscious, right? Of when, when you are thirsty and now you're conscious of your thirst. No, thirst is, thirst is a different thing. That's in the conscious part of your brain. That's always there. Because why is thirst in the conscious part? Because I'm going to have to drink the water. I'm going to have to actually get some water and pour myself a glass of water or get a Diet Coke or something to uh, provide myself with more water. I'm going to have to consciously do that. So that's uh, in the conscious part of our brain. We're going to be learning all about the brain. The brain is a large organ. And most of what goes on in your brain is fun operating at a subconscious level. Only the very outer part of your brain, the cerebral cortex, only what it's doing and thinking reaches your level of consciousness. Most of the other parts of your brain will be learning about the, uh, the, the cerebellum, the uh, basal ganglia, the uh, thalamus, the medulla oblongata, the hypothalamus. All of these parts of the brain are operating subconsciously. The analogy I like to give is that uh, how many times have you been working on your computer using a word, you know, the, a word processor or Excel, and it's running a antiviral check in the background? Ever had that where it says it's running an antivirus? And so do you see anything on your computer? No, it's running in the background. It's searching. It's looking for bad guys. And it's all operating. It'll, it'll let you know if there's a problem, it'll pop up. And if there's no problem, that's it. It's just running in the background the computer. Subconsciously. Not interfering with you working on your word processing. So there's all kinds of stuff going on in our brain subconsciously. These are the categories of neurons. And in fact, I've summarized it right up here. All right. So on this overall diagram, the nervous system. We divide the nervous system into two parts, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system, CNS and PNS. The central nervous system is made up of your brain and spinal cord. What do we call the neurons that are inside your brain and spinal cord that are used for thinking and memory and decision making? Inner neurons. Well, what's the peripheral nervous system? Our first thought is, I don't know. The peripheral nervous system are those nerves coming off the brain and spinal cord. There's all these nerves. What's inside those nerves? You'd say, I don't know. What's inside those nerves are sensory neurons and motor neurons. The sensory neurons are bringing information to the brain and spinal cord, to the central nervous system. The motor neurons are sending commands away from the central nervous system, activating these effectors. There are, in fact, two types of sensory neurons inside these cranial and spinal nerves. There are somatic sensory neurons and visceral sensory neurons. Somatic sensory neurons send information from your skin and skeletal muscles, and it reaches consciousness. 
visceral sensory neurons send information from your internal organs. That information goes to a different part of your brain than the information from your somatic sensory neurons. And because it's going to a lower part of your brain, it doesn't reach consciousness. There's also two types of motor neurons inside these spinal nerves. There are somatic motor neurons that permit, permit voluntary control of your skeletal muscles. There's also autonomic motor neurons that automatically control your internal organs. Right, so the, if we go back to page 28, so where we had left off was page 28, and then I jumped ahead. And we were learning what kinds of nerve fibers, what kind of wires are inside of a spinal nerve. So now we understand there's the sensory neurons bringing information in, and there are the motor neurons sending commands out to the effectors. Does everybody follow that? That's what's inside of a nerve. The nerves you can see with your eyes, these microscopic wires are microscopic nerve cells, thinner than a nylon thread. And so they're very important, but they're really, really small. They're like cells, but very long. About this, the meninges. The meninges, I've already mentioned, are those membranes that ensheath the central nervous system. There are three meningeal coverings. There's the dura mater, and, uh, which is real tough. It literally means tough mother. And the epidural space is the space just outside the dura mater. And we'll have more to say about that on the next page, page 29. This uh, picture on page 29 literally shows the dura mater being lifted up off the surface of the brain. So these meninges or membranes not only surround the spinal cord, they also surround and protect the brain as well. Now the middle membrane is called the arachnoid membrane, and the innermost one's called the pia mater, the soft mother. We did mention, and we had a picture a couple pages ago, that the space right underneath the arachnoid membrane, between the arachnoid membrane and pia matter, is called the subarachnoid space, and it's filled with CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. What is meningitis? Meningitis is an inflammation, could be an infection, right? Isn't that a type of inflammation, infection, microbial infection, of the meninges? And uh, it's very dangerous because if you have an infection of the meninges, the infection, uh, bacterial or viral, can spread into the central nervous system. Schwann cells are really very much like oligodendroglial cells, but in the peripheral nervous system. You'd say, what? Okay, so what were the oligodendrocytes or oligodendroglia? We said those are what form the insulation or myelin covering around some of the interneurons in the central nervous system. So uh, there are similarly myelin sheets or myelin covering cells wrapped around sensory neurons and motor neurons in the peripheral nervous system. Now not all sensory neurons or motor neurons have this covering. Uh, you know, which I said is a little bit similar to a plastic coating around a, a copper wire. But those sensory neurons or motor neurons that do have this covering, uh, uh, the cells that form that covering or myelin co sheath uh, are called Schwann cells. In fact, in this particular picture, that's really what these are. It says myelin sheath, and these are Schwann cells wrapped around, and this is either a sensory neuron or motor neuron, and again, notice those gaps between those cells known as nodes of Ron VA. And we'll talk more about that as we go on. So again, they just give di uh, the, uh, na two different names to the cells that form this covering around inner neurons in the central nervous system versus sensory neurons or motor neurons in the peripheral nervous system. 